And this thing stand out, stands out for a couple of reasons. First of all, I genuinely believe this thing kept us alive. And secondly, it's what gave me hope. After school, I, I joined the British Army and spent three years then with the, uh, with the British SAS, the Special Forces. And during this time, I had a, uh, a free fall parachuting accident where, uh, where I had a canopy uh, rip and two at about 16,000 feet in Africa as it was getting dark and just, uh, just came sp spiraling down very, very fast, uh, blacked out and, and smashed into the desert and broke my back then in three different places and spent really then the next 18 months uh, back in the UK, strapped up in, uh, in braces and in plaster, uh, in what they call uh, military rehabilitation, uh, which is really just a posh word for a horrible hospital. Uh, but I just remember lying there during these months with the doctors not, not knowing, you know, not knowing if I was going to be able to do, you know, just to be able to walk again properly, let alone do this one thing that I could now do well, uh, which was to climb. And suddenly this dream of Everest that I had held on to for so long, it just seemed out of what I could uh, believe in. When you're trying to become successful, you're going to have to go through trials and tribulations when you want to be what you want to be. It's not going to be easy and you're going to have to be able to push yourself to the limit and make sure that you understand who you truly are and what you truly want to become and develop into and try to emulate. But if you truly have something that you want to accomplish in mind, make sure you do whatever you can to possibly go out there and get it done. No matter if that means giving it more time, energy, effort, more thought, no matter what the case may be, just make sure that you are giving a 100% effort because you can can always do one thing but it's hard to do two things all in so you have to find something that you truly love something that you're truly passionate about and fully pursue that with everything that you have don't hold back and make sure that you know what you want to do be the person that you want to be and just stay focused and dedicated to what it is that you truly care about because once you decide what it is that you want to do and what you care about and what you love you can then start to pour all your time and energy into that and focus and learn about it and gain information and grow in your ideas and your wisdom to accomplish that goal that you truly want to accomplish it all starts out with your mindset and how you want to go about getting stuff done. If you say that you're going to do it, go out there and try. Go out there and make it happen. Go out there and put good effort in so that you reap good results. I yeah, love the boating. We're always making rafts, you know, restoring old little putt-putt boats. And then that was in the summer and in the winter we'd, we'd climb and we'd go for these things. And I go back to the cliffs now and they're tiny, you know, but at the time I felt like I was climbing the biggest mountain in the world. And, you know, it was a mix of against the elements with him. And I felt braver, I think, when I was with him. I just loved it. I, I, I think it was as much about wanting to hang out with him, actually, as it was about the climbing, because I didn't always like being scared, and I was scared a lot of the time. Well, it was a difficult decision for me. It was, it was a difficult decision, I think, especially for my family, because I'd broken my back in this free fall accident like a year earlier that lived through all the stress of me being in this military rehab centre at Headley Court, having to leave the army, being unable to move, being strapped up in braces, doctors not knowing if I was going to be able to walk again properly, and, you know, and, and they'd been through such kind of trauma really alongside me of which I kind of felt guilty about in a way but for me I was desperate for that identity again that this was what I could do and and, and I will walk again I will climb again and I need that focus and that Everest poster that had been on my bed from such a young age became the whole focus of that recovery you know we had four climbers lose their lives up there two died of the cold two fell and you see the harsh real side of high altitude mountaineering and it was ugly and, and frightening and horrible. You know, a lot happened up there. You know, I almost lost my life down a deep crevasse early on in the expedition. I should have been killed by a big avalanche that whisked past us by a fraction, you know. The truth is, I, I reached that summit by the skin of my teeth and got away with my life where others didn't, but came away very actually humbled and in some ways less confident than I went. You know, I went like going and do this. And I came back thinking, flipping Nora, I've been lucky here. You know, I remember speaking to my dad actually when we got off the very end of it. And he'd gone every faltering step of the way together with me on that mountain. And I knew he'd be, you know, he would have loved to, he did share it with me up there. And one of my great sort of prides in my life is that he was alive to see me do that. And, um, you know, we did it together. 
You know, I would have two, two things differently. One, I wouldn't have stayed in that B&B in Scotland with the family. Heaven as it was to stay with them, I would have been smart and go, that's going to come back to haunt you, which it did. And secondly, I would have done what they did after all of this scandal, which was Discovery and Channel 4 put a disclaimer at the front saying, don't do anything of this at home. You know, scenes are presented to bear to show you how to stay alive. And I think the best response always is to get back out there, get back on that, you know, saddle of the ranch horse. I'm big enough and ugly enough now to realize you know that's just part of it don't mm. take it so personally and you know you see it with clearer eyes eight years on well it definitely gets harder as the years go on I, I, I hurt more and old injuries like my back hurt more and all of this and you get more scars and but i love this quote that says i don't want to arrive at the end of my life in a perfectly preserved body i want to come screaming <laughs> sideways covered in scars battered bruised but screaming well, they've got more sense than me. They're, they're smart boys. And, you know, my dad always used to say to me, you've got to follow your dreams and look after your friends along the way. And that was life in a nutshell for him. And I try and say the same things to them. It's just they're not allowed to climb Everest with the one or six yards they're coming home. <laughs> but I want to say to my kids, go for it. Depend on the fire inside, you know, because we all have it. And sometimes in life it gets covered over by dust and we don't visit very often. But the truth is, as humans, when we're pushed, we're strong. And don't be scared to visit that fire. Don't be scared to depend on that fire because it's in, it's God given in each of us and it will keep you alive and it's stronger than you think. Thank you all so much for watching this video. If you haven't already, please go ahead and like the video, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and let us know what you thought down in that comment section down below.